Welcome to part two of a three-part interview entitled Fundraising and People of Color, designed to help those people of color working in nonprofit organizations and how best to meet the needs of donors of color. I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, I'd like to welcome to the Development Effectiveness uh, Strategies channel, Erica Jurena. Uh, I want to take a minute, Erica, and introduce you because you've got a, a terrific resume. Uh, Erica is, um, is the advisor, has been an advisor to global organizations and executive leaders. She's uh, been, had experience in serving organizations across many sectors for the last 20 years. She's worked in government, has served the attorneys general, governors, and prosecutors in community efforts. She uh, has had her education at Harvard and the United States Department of Education, worked in both those areas in, uh, in education. She's worked with non profits, including faith-based uh, organizations. She's worked with homelessness uh, and in the entertainment industry, uh, film and music. She has her expertise in training, coaching, hosting, speaking on topics such as diversity, inclusion, be and belonging in uh, community engagement and fundraising with high net donors and other segments and strategic partnerships. And uh, we've, she's had the privilege of working in the local, regional, national, and international territories. She's fully bilingual and uh, she's passionate about serving people who are leading companies in and through challenging circumstances and using those experiences to maximize their greatest potential. She founded the organization Gracias, which stands for giving, resources, appreciation, care, inspiration, adding value, and service. And she'll talk about Gracias in a little while. But uh, Erica, welcome. <laughs> well, Erica, one of the things that we talked a lot about in the last video was just really about uh, developing a unique strategy for each person, um, not making assumptions on people. How about uh, addressing a little bit from the perspective of a, of a partner, of a donor of color, what, what are the kinds of things that they're thinking about? What are their what are their passions going to be? What do we need to be thinking about as we're trying to develop a unique plan and a unique focus for them? Sure. Um, so I think like anyone else, you definitely have to make the time to do the research, right? First and foremost, like any donor meeting that we're going to have, you need to at least be responsible and do that. Um, but I think what's going to be really helpful is I would advise um, the first and foremost is do not make assumptions or generalizations. Uh, that's very, very important because we can take the narrative that we've heard of a, a particular people group or groups of people or groups of color or people of color, and we can just say, oh, they're all this way. Oh, they're all, they all give this way. They all sound, and we want to be very, very careful to understand that you know, as humans, we are individuals. And so therefore you have to do the work to get to know individuals within a community. Um, and so I would say, don't make any assumptions because that really gets in the way of, of the work that, that you're trying to do. But instead, take the time to research. If you pull your reports, use your CRM. If you pull the reports, don't just pull the report and say, okay, we have these donors in this area, whatever, but go deeper, understand, you know, like in marketing and PR, this is what we would teach as well, is just like, make sure that you're going in there and you're understanding that demographics, what they like, what they hate, what, um, how, what kind of language do they use? What are the kinds of visuals that that they like to interact with or engage in um, and then take into account you know not just ethnicity but also gender and age and all of that because that also plays a role into how you engage with different communities mm, that's excellent erica i appreciate that so much well erica you and i have been in development for a long time and we've you know we've learned all the formulas all the plans all the process <laughs> What what makes um, reaching out to people of color uh, that are partners, donors, what, what makes them different? What makes them unique? Um, what would you say 
you know, we, we never want to put anybody in a box, but what would you say makes people unique or different people of color? Yeah. So I think, uh, as human, as human beings, humanity, we are, we're people, we're people first, we're humans first. Right. But I think the difference is contextualization. So you cannot just apply your principles and all the charts and the flow charts and the, the, all the beautiful graphics that we all follow as wonderful development people. You can't just take that and just move it over to every single segment and every single demographic and just assume that it would work. Um, I think you're gonna be very disappointed. And I'm sure that a lot of you out there have tried that or you've said things like, I have people that have said things to me like, well, we translated everything into Spanish. Uh, we translated all of our documents into Spanish and I'm just like, that's great, but they speak English. So, you know, number one, you know, but it's kind of like just the language, changing language is not enough. You have to, you have to understand the context from which people come from in order to really effectively engage and communicate well with them. And so what you have to do is make sure that you are paying attention to what, how do different people groups define generosity and how do they like to then approach the giving because the number one thing that you're selling above anything else is trust that is the number one product that you go in and you sell especially in these groups because they're not very trusting they don't know what you're going to do with money and for some of them like i shared in my story it's the first time our first experience where we're learning you know like to just be giving, just to write a check. And so you can't make the assumption that they just know what they're supposed to do next. You have to journey with that individual step by step. And so, and make sure that your communication is effective and the visuals that you use tell a story that connect um, where they can see themselves inside of your organization. If they don't see that in your marketing material and the pieces that you're putting in front of them, if you've not done your research and you've not contextualized that, it can be very intimidating and then they'll immediately disconnect and disengage. And so you have to show that you've been able to, to do that. And so context 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 <laughs> uh, you know erica not long ago you shared with me a story about a cuban businessman uh that that to me really showed a lot of the importance of building trust um tell our audience about that so when you know this is somebody that's a really really high executive in a very very global large uh uh corporation um and he is of Cuban descent. And so when I was talking to him and, and going to meet with him in his office, of course, it was totally different. Like, let's grab a coffee, a lot more relaxed, even though he held a very senior and executive role for a lot of, um, in this kind of, in our Latino community, it's family, family. And so if they can feel safe around you, um, and you can foster the kind of that environment and facilitate an environment like that where they feel kind of like, okay, I can talk to this individual and not come through. So like, you know, here's a structure and here's the chart and here's, that is actually can be very intimidating for a person. And so even if they understand everything that you're saying, it just shows your lack of of being able to apply and contextualize your work to, to their world, to invite them in. So um, for him, it took a lot more coffees, a lot more lunches, a lot more, you know, text messages, emails. Hey, this is what's going on. Hey, this is what's going on. But I had to do the research and say, okay, this is an individual of Cuban descent, um, has, you know, four kids. They all live, they are all successful as well. Um, so he's kind of like first generation, you know, money in his, in his case, in his instance. And so just cultivating him over time, learning about his wife, learning about his kids and his grandkids that is on the way, you know, and, and just always touching base with him. So where we typically follow the chart of like, you know, call, visit, research, visit again, you know, call, whatever you follow that, but the gaps are wider. And because again, you're trying to earn trust the whole time, but then there's stories that they share. And so one of the stories that he shared with me was, was saying, oh my gosh, Erica, I was getting ready to present at a meeting with all these global, with all the, the global team. And I was so nervous and I was like, what? You, you were nervous? How could you be nervous? And um, he just was like laughing. He's like, I get nervous. And I'm like, oh my 
my gosh, I didn't know. Like, and especially for men, I was like, I didn't know men got nervous. You know, I thought it was just women. And so he's like, no, I was scared to death, you know? And um, so it was really funny. And so then I was able to kind of take that experience and weave it into what I was inviting him into. Um, so just kind of saying, you know how you felt like you didn't belong in that space, but because individuals were there to train and equip and coach you, like that's what this organization does. They go in, they train local leaders in country. And I was able to tie that into the ask that we did. So you have to be able to paint the picture in such a way where they see themselves making such a difference for their community, because that's the heart for many, many of us uh, minorities and people of color is like, we want to make a difference. So we want to give back, you know, we want to add value. We're not asking for anything. We, we really want to add value. And so as a result of that, he did give a significant gift and was absolutely engaged. But I had to include his part of the world when I was sharing the, the larger story of the world. I had to include Cuba in there and the great work that was happening there in order for him to really connect the dots. Wow, that's great, Erica. Well, I'll tell you, um, trust to me, that's worth the price of admission of the being on the uh, Development Effectiveness Strategies channel. That uh, That's so very, very important. Well, I'm, I know there'll be some that will want to give you words of encouragement. How, how do our viewers uh, reach you, Erica? Yes, please visit me, ericajarena.com. That's my website. Fill out the form. Um, that'll go straight to our team, and I will look forward to hearing from you. I welcome comments, questions, and, of course, the opportunity to serve you. So mm. thank you so much, Jim. Oh, absolutely. And as always, if there's any comments for me or for Erica, please put those in the comments section below. Uh, be sure to uh, hit the subscribe button if you aren't already subscribing, and click the bell so that you can be reminded when these videos are, are released and we certainly exist to help you. And as I always say, uh, what we want to do is reach the goal of being fully funded. Thank you. Mm -hmm.